on guys, I'm going to show you the best way to mount your flight controller and ESC. You mount it like this, you should have zero issues with noise, you should be able to flash defaults and go. So the first thing before we get started, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel and if you look down below there's a little uh, bell, if you click that, YouTube's changed the way it works, it pretty much wants to show you the things that you've used the bell on above everything else in the feed. So if you want to make sure you see things like this, please hit the bell. Make sure you subscribe and also comment because we love the comments and I'm going to try to answer them when you comment. And also, if I don't answer them in the comments, I will answer them in the future video. So let's get started. So first of all, I want you to see here, if you look right here, the way I mount this is one long screw. Um, if you don't have a press nut like this frame does here, the best thing to do is to use a nut and to cinch it down on the nut. Then. I like to use two O-rings, then the ESC. What this does is give it plenty of room between the bottom plate and the ESC. So if you're in a crash, it compresses, it's still not gonna touch. I use these skinny O-rings. Um, you might be able to use one of the thicker O-rings in place of the two skinny O-rings. Something to keep in mind is you only want O-rings, the gummies in the uh, ESC and flight controller only. Don't use those vibration standoffs or don't use standoffs or don't use anything else. This is made to mount like this using a very cheap long screw and maybe a nut at the bottom. You can use a nylon nut or a metal nut and that's it. So it's a very cheap mounting system that works really well. Don't put nuts on the top of it. Make sure you only put nuts on the bottom. If you do crash and it dislodges, you just push it back down. But in general, it just will stay perfect there and you won't have any issues. So then what you wanna do is use two Usually it's two on the bottom to keep clearance. You're just going to want to look here. If you compress, make sure nothing touches. And then use two above and then put the flight controller on. The other thing to keep in mind is you always want this big block, this chip right here on top. It's the thing that's most prone to receive interference. Uh, it's the CPU. Technically it's an MCU. And you want to keep this out on the away from everything, which will give you the best performance. The other thing to keep in mind is on the opposite side of this board, there's a little black square in the center. Our gyros are always a little black square. They're always in the center. You don't want anything touching them. I'm routing this ESC cable under there, but I'm making sure it's kind of cinched down a little bit so it doesn't touch the gyro because that's where you're going to get the worst performance is if there's something scratching on the gyro. Uh, the other thing is the other cables you want to route outside here. Don't route them through route them outside because those cables can, you know, if you get interference from the ESC or something, it's going to show up in your video feed and a lot of people have issues with that. If you do have noisy video, the other thing you can try and do is power the video directly from the BTX. That sometimes helps. Uh, but in general, you should just be able to plug it in and go and it should work pretty well. Um, the other thing is you want to make sure that uh, this cable right here is there's plenty of slack on it you don't want it to be too tight um, you can see there's a little bit of play in there as well uh, the other thing is your motor wires don't route those inside this stack I've seen a lot of people that they, they they kind of try to make it look clean and they like to put them inside over the board that does two things one it basically makes it so you hide any solder balls or anything like that that could just be moving around so you won't even notice them and the other thing is it's putting something that causes interference directly underneath our boards. Uh, those wires kind of create RF interference, you know, little electromagnet type uh, situation. So by just taking them and soldering them on the edge and getting them away from the board as quick as possible, you're gonna have the best performance. I always like to mount mine like this where the motor wires are inside the frame and then just route them around to the arms. And then I can have the XT60 out the side and I have the USB on the side and I've had zero issues on every one of my quads doing this. I've done this on my quads for months and months and I've never had one quad that flew bad out of all the quads I've built and I've probably built at least 50 uh, in the last few months and so this is a pretty flawless way to do things. After all, I use the same hardware you guys use. I pull it right out of the stock uh, so there's no difference between our hardware and the main difference between why I'm having 100% success rate and other people are having problems is just the way they mount things. The number one rule is don't mount anything else on the stack. This should be the only thing on the stack here. If you're putting your, your VTX on the stack or you're putting your uh, RX on the stack, it may work, but it's gonna be more likely you're gonna have problems because you're transmitting RF interference and vibration from those objects into your stack. And the cleaner we can make the stack, the better your quad's gonna fly. So what I like to do is put them on the top plate, just you know, kind of just flip it over, put it up underneath, 
or, um, you know, or put them on the bottom plate or just put them in front of it. Just get them out of the way of the stack. Let the stack just be isolated by itself and it will work flawlessly. Um, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them. And I hope you have a great flying day.